the Philadelphia Eagles are 3-0 on the season after going to Tampa Bay and defeating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As the rain came down at Raymond James Stadium on Ronde Barber night, the Eagles rained on the parade too, downing the Buccaneers by a score of 25-11. to Welcome to the Bird's Nest Podcast. I'm Joe Donahue. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was a game that, especially early on, had us on edge a bit at times. The first quarter got off to a bit of a rocky start as the Eagles and Buccaneers traded possessions without scores early in the game. The Bucs had to punt to start the game, and the Eagles marched deep into Buccaneers' territory, but got a little bit too confident in their fourth down conversion ability and did not convert at the Buccaneers' 14-yard line. The Eagles did draw first blood in the first quarter, though. They did get a field goal later in the first quarter, and after the Bucks tied it up in the second, the Eagles were able to peel away in the second quarter, and they never looked back. It felt a little bit more even than most of the statistics actually showed. The Eagles did dominate in total yards in the first half, 228-86. to But what made it feel more even was the time of possession, which was just 40 seconds apart at the end of the first half. The Eagles won the battle in the first half by 15 minutes and 20 seconds to the Buccaneers' 14 minutes and 40 seconds. The other thing is that neither team was really successful in the red zone. Again, we saw the Eagles turn the ball over on downs at the Buccaneers' 14-yard line. The Buccaneers had one appearance in the red zone, but they were not able to convert there. That's what came to the field goal. As the first half waned to a close, the Eagles and the Buccaneers actually engaged in a few turnover wars. The Eagles were able to intercept a Baker Mayfield pass. He was throwing it, and it was picked off by Reed Blankenship. He read the throw beautifully and was able to... I uh, cross right in front of Mike Evans to pick off Baker Mayfield. Now, Hertz was able to take it over at that point, and he progressed a couple of plays, but he wound up uh, himself getting picked off by Buccaneers defender Devin White. Then Jalen Carter was able to get to the football a couple of times on the ensuing drive. He forced a strip sack on Baker Mayfield that the Buccaneers were able to recover, but on the very next play, he forced a fumble by Rashad White that the Eagles were able to recover thanks to James Bradbury's very heads-up alert ball sense. So that set up an Eagles field goal going into halftime, and that's what set up going into halftime by two scores. The Eagles were able to capitalize more on their opportunities in the first half, and that was the big difference. Again, the Eagles had a couple of field goals in the first half, but the Eagles also had a beautiful touchdown throw to Alameda Zacchaeus. That was his first touchdown as a Philadelphia Eagle. It was a 34-yard pass, and it was the longest play of the night for either team. Again, Jake Elliott was called on for a pair of field goals, so the score 13-3 to going into half. It didn't feel like it, though, if you were an Eagles fan, and we touched on a little bit why. Again, the time of possession battle uh, and the fact that teams were not great in the red zone during the first half. Fortunately, the second half was much more dominating. The Eagles finished with almost 39 minutes of time of possession, And in total net yards, they had 472 compared to the Buccaneers' 174 at the end of the game. They had 201 rushing yards on the night compared to the Buccaneers' 41. The Buccaneers simply couldn't get anything going in the run game, whereas the Eagles were able to really control the line of scrimmage, were able to control the lanes, thanks to DeAndre Swift and Kenny Gainwell. Passing yards, 271 on the night compared to Baker Mayfield throwing for 133 yards. The Eagles were by far and away much more dominating in the second half. And that also showed in the time of possession battle. The Eagles finished with 39 minutes, almost 39 minutes in the time of possession battle. The Eagles only had four drives in the second half, 
except for one drive that stalled out after six plays after Jalen Hurts threw his second interception on the night. The Eagles held the ball for at least five minutes in the other drives. That included draining the final nine minutes and 22 seconds off of the clock, which honestly, that was a feat I was not expecting from the Eagles, from Brian Johnson, from Nick Sirianni. I was not expecting the game to be over on that final drive with nine minutes and 22 seconds left. I was expecting the Buccaneers were going to take over at least one more drive and try to go down the field once more, maybe twice more. The Bucks, however, could not really do anything. Again, they had the ball three times. One was a safety, thanks to Nicholas Moreau, dropping Rashad Evans in the end zone. The only productive drive they had was one that led to their only touchdown of the game late in the game. That pulled the Bucks to within two scores, but the Eagles were able to hold on at the end of the day, even though on that drive, the Eagles gave up three first downs in a row, and that was not pleasant to watch. We'll come back to that. Jalen Hurts had a decent day. He went 23 for 37. Again, 277 passing yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He also ran 10 times for 28 yards. He had a QB sneak touchdown as well. Number of players on the offense do deserve some acknowledgement. DeAndre Swift had a 130-yard day today. He had 16 carries, including his longest run of 29 yards on the night. He split the workload with Kenny Gainwell, back from injury this week. Gainwell had 14 rushes for 43 yards, including most of the runs at the end of the game. Boston Scott was out with injury, and Rashad Penny did not see any action over the course of the day. In the receiving game, A.J. Brown, who was caught during the Minnesota Vikings game, having a conversation with Jalen Hurts that got a little bit heated. It was rumored to be about his targets, but those were obviously unconfirmed reports. He bounced back to be the leading receiver. He caught nine passes for 131 yards. He did have a couple of bad drops. There were a number of those by a number of players. The one that stands out for me, A.J. Brown, had the ball in his hands in the end zone, and he just simply could not reel it in. So that left the only receiving touchdown to be the one that was caught by Alameda Zacchaeus. He had two catches for 58 yards. Again, the only receiving touchdown. Dallas Goddard and Devontae Smith got in the mix, too. Uh, Dallas Goddard had five catches for 41 yards. Meanwhile, Devontae Smith had four catches for 28 yards. Again, the Bucks really couldn't get anything going over the course of this game. Baker Mayfield went 15 for 25. He had 146 passing yards, including one touchdown and one interception. Statistically, he had a better passer rating than Hurts, but we all know that when Hurts can't win in the air, he has the ability to beat you on the ground. And we saw that a little bit tonight in Hurts with the run game, with Hurts 10 rushes for 28 yards. Mayfield's top target was Mike Evans. He was targeted 10 times. He caught five of those for 60 yards, including the Buccaneers' only touchdown. Chris Godwin was also a frequent target, but the bulk of the offensive work tonight was done for the Buccaneers by Rashad White. He ran 14 times for 38 yards, and he had three catches for 24 yards. His number was called quite a bit over the course of the evening. Now, looking at the Eagles' defense and looking at the Sean Desai-led defense, there's a lot to be excited about. Reed Blankenship, back from injury, combined for seven tackles, one of them for a loss, and he also had one interception. The defensive line was exceptional in getting pressure to Mayfield. He was sacked twice for a loss of 13 yards over the course of those two sacks, and the defensive line hit Mayfield five times. Jalen Carter once again proved why he was a top 10 pick in the draft splitting one of those two sacks with Fletcher Cox. He also forced two fumbles, one of which recovered by James Bradbury. We touched on those. The Eagles even got a safety this game. After the Eagles turned the ball over in the third quarter, the Bucs tried to hand it off to Rashad Evans at their own one-yard line, and he was tackled in the end zone. That safety is a momentum killer for a team that really needed to grab hold of something. And the Eagles' defense were able to kill that momentum. And that, again, is huge 
and one of the reasons why the defense was the standout star of the night. Really, except for that final Bucks drive, the Eagles' defense was what was able to allow the Eagles to keep the ball firmly in their control, keep the game firmly in their control, and that certainly made the biggest difference for this team. There are things to improve on as you look at the game. The play call going for it on fourth and two deep in Bucks territory is one such thing. I think you go get the points there at the end of the day. It didn't really matter because, well, the Eagles won by more than two scores. But if the Eagles were losing this game by a field goal or if it was really close, if it was one of those things where a field goal makes the difference, I think we're singing a bit of a different tune at this point in the game. Jalen Hurts, two interceptions were not great either. His first one picked off by Devin White. That actually was a bad throw. He was looking for Devontae Smith and missed left, and it was really right to Devin White, so that was that. The second one, he was looking for Smith again. Uh, He threw into double coverage, and D. Delaney just had a really good read on it and was able to come away with the football. Again, led to the safety, so things work out better for the Eagles in that case. But at the end of the day, that's still not a great throw, and that's a really bad decision to throw it in that general direction. So there's still some opportunity for him to uh, grow in that domain. Certainly there have been some really good things, some really good uh, throws. There were some really bad misses by him, though, as well. There were some really bad misses as well by Eagles receivers. We touched on the A.J. Brown one, but that was happening a lot over the course of the game uh, by a number of the receivers. and. I'm going to chalk some of that up to it being raining in Tampa Bay. But again, if you're A.J. Brown and you've got a ball hit your hands in the end zone, you've got to bring that in. However, my biggest concern was that defensively on that final Buccaneers drive, we got picked apart. The Eagles gave up three first downs in a row on that final drive, and it sucked the life out of any Eagles fan that was watching this. We didn't know it was coming. We didn't know that there was going to be a 9 minute and a 22 second drive that bled the clock at the end of the game and meant that the Buccaneers weren't going to get the ball back. But it sucked all of the life out of us in that. It certainly sucked my own life out of it, out of me watching that. And it wasn't because there was any real confidence in the Bucks being able to win Again, they were down by three scores at this point, but it was more concerned for what's going to happen later in the season when the Eagles face off against some really, really strong contenders. The Eagles are going to face off against the Chiefs next time on Monday Night Football when they are on Monday night. The Eagles are going to face off against the Bills. Heck, we even face off against the Dolphins in a few weeks, and they just finished dropping 70 points on the Denver Broncos Rumor is they're still scoring in certain Broncos players and fans' dreams. And it wasn't like they were dropping 70 points in terms of interceptions or in terms of special teams play or anything like that. No, those were 70 points of offensive touchdowns. The Eagles have a significantly better defense than the Broncos. But looking at that and looking at the Eagles getting picked apart late in the game, by the Buccaneers, has me concerned. And I'm interested to see how Sean Desai is going to work with his defense to be able to improve them. I'm interested in seeing how Brian Johnson's going to work with the offense to be able to improve the offense. Again, some of these mistakes were offensive. But again, my bigger concern was the defense on that final drive. The Eagles defense will need to show a bit more dominance in these late game situations so as not to give up critical plays that could cost the team the game to a better opponent. Now, the Eagles did activate punter Braden Mann from the practice squad. He had one punt in the second quarter. It was a 38-yard punt. I did an unofficial hang time check on Braden Mann. The unofficial hang time was 4.23 seconds. So I do think there's still improvement to be had in the punting game. We'll see what winds up happening there. 
Devin Allen was activated from the practice squad. Boston Scott being in concussion protocol was not available to return kickoffs, so Devin Allen did. Devin Allen had a really, really, really good kickoff return in the preseason. In today's game, not so much. His return today was lackluster. It was one return, 17 yards. He really should have let that one bounce out of the end zone or taken advantage of the new rule that's in place this year where if you fair catch the football behind the 25-yard line, it is effectively a touchback and you get the ball to start at the 25-yard line. Instead, the Eagles started at their own 16-yard line after Allen returned it from one yard deep in the end zone. Still improvement to be had there, but on the whole, This was a really, really, really good game, and certainly I'm pleased with the outcome. Looking back at the game, really pleased with it. It was just a solid game all around. Statistically, again, except for the first half where, again, it felt more even than it actually was, statistically it was a totally dominating game for the Eagles. And once the Eagles went up 22-3, to I was feeling reasonably comfortable. At the end of the day, though, the Eagles are 3-0. and The Eagles are undefeated to start the season. The last time we started 3-0, and we went to the Super Bowl. Not saying that that's going to happen this time, but it's always a great start. Next week, the Eagles face off on their first divisional matchup. It's a 1 p.m. start against the Washington Commanders at home. It's one of only two 1 p.m. starts the Eagles have as of right now. Again, flex scheduling could change some of that later in the season. But as of right now, the Eagles are only playing two 1 o'clock start time games, and both of them are against the Commanders, and one of them is next week. The Commanders did deal us our first loss of the season last year, so it is not a team to overlook. And even though they got pounced by the Buffalo Bills this week, 37-3, They're not a team that I'm really ready to overlook. It has trap game written all over it. But the Eagles are the only undefeated team in the NFC East. All three of our NFC East rivals lost this weekend. I alluded to Washington getting pounced by Buffalo. The New York Giants dropped a Thursday night game to the San Francisco 49ers. And then you have the Dallas Cowboys falling to Jonathan Gannon and the Arizona Cardinals. And you know what? Some of that, I think I'm going to chalk up to Jonathan Gannon, giving us a little bit of uh, one more apology for the anti-tampering allegations that went down following Super Bowl 57. So thank you, Jonathan Gannon, for dealing the Cowboys their first loss of the season. They would have been insufferable if we had to keep hearing from them. So that's my recap of the game. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments. What got you excited about this team? What are you thinking needs improvement as we move into this next stretch of the season? Let me know. And thank you so much for tuning in to the Birds Nest podcast. You can support the Birds Nest podcast by liking and subscribing to Birds Nest Media on YouTube and sharing to your social media pages. You can also find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Amazon Podcasts, and Spotify. Please also visit birdsnestmedia.com for Eagles news. And if you feel so inclined to support more endeavors like this one, you can find the link to our Patreon either in the description below or at birdsnestmedia.com. Thank you so much for tuning in, and let's go, Eagles!